We've got the Saudis and the UAE uh, basically uh, in disagreement. I can't say there's a lot of precedent for that in recent years. But the oil market doesn't have a clear reaction in terms of whether that's bullish or bearish. What's your read? Well, no, thank you, Yusuf. Um, at this point in time, the uh, seemingly uh, standoff between Saudi Arabia and the UAE and its impact on oil prices is moving oil prices higher. This is also uh, supported by increased consumption, uh, summer months, uh, return to some normalcy in key uh, oil-consuming markets. And we'd expect to see these trends uh, continue in place to be able to support higher oil prices unless we start to see increased production. And if we don't see increased production as a result of this stalemate, then we'd expect to see oil prices remain uh, quite well bid very supportive of the regional equity markets and very supportive of the companies and sentiment uh, for uh, regional investors. Eric, good morning to you. Yeah, I mean, Prince Abdullah's as Bin Salman makes it very clear that they have a deal. Um, that is progress. That deal is, of course, uh, you know, contingent on extension. But if there is no additional production, and that's what that deal would mean, Eric, what's the risk of $100 oil? And that's a political collision course with the U.S., isn't it? Well, I would say there's little possibility of oil prices uh, reaching uh, such ele elevated uh, levels as uh, $100 a barrel. I think if we see further price increases, then you will see reaction from OPEC Plus as a uh, mechanism to retain uh, some uh, level of oil prices, which seem to be, as people are saying, in the comfort zone between the producers uh, as well as the consumers. So there's a negotiation taking place between the countries around their production levels. And at some point in time, I'd expect them to uh, reach agreement. The constructive stance that you've had on the credit cycle, that remains intact. This is what you're writing in your research. But it isn't necessarily reassuring uh, as it would normally be. Just run us through that thesis. We have very much been focused on investing in uh, shorter dated uh, real estate securities from those companies that have strong cash balances, as well as those companies which are benefiting from a higher uh, oil price. In particular, we've been looking at uh, DMAC. We have seen, even interestingly, that the company itself has been in the market uh, buying up their uh, securities. The company is well uh, financed and has sufficient monies at hand to be able to pay off uh, in full the securities which they have outstanding. In addition to that, uh, Dar al Khan also has good cash balances and is in a strong financial position with sufficient cash uh, in order to uh, pay off uh, its uh, upcoming bond uh, maturities. The other uh, country that we are uh, focused on is Oman, who also benefits from higher oil prices as they are quite levered into uh, oil revenue and the financial position that the country has vis-a-vis -vis their deficit and spending requirements. Now, Eric, I, I'm drawn to the equity side of, of your view at the moment. You talk about, obviously, the performance of Abu Dhabi, the performance of our GCC equity markets. And two of those bellwethers, FAB and IHQ, I mean, IHQ in of itself up 180 um, percent. How long of these stocks would you recommend that people should be? Can, I simply can't be long of the UAE without being, uh, I suppose, exposed to these two particular equities, can I? Uh, no, I would, I would think not. Um, that said, we tend to focus on some of the more secure names uh, in, the port, uh, in these markets at this point in time. The rising oil prices has certainly lifted sentiment, lifted gross prospects for the uh, region, and for those reasons, we've seen the GCC markets move up over 25% in the first half of the year, led by Abu Dhabi. But Saudi Arabia, the largest market in the region, is up over uh, 28%. So there have been good opportunities for investors in uh, all of these markets over this period, really backed on uh, improving uh, fundamentals for the region on the back of uh, higher oil prices. Uh, one of the securities that we've been um, interested in over the uh, most recent period, uh, Adnoc Distribution, which has benefited from 
their expansion of uh, gas stations, particularly in Saudi Arabia, but also in Dubai. The company's securities are supported by a very high dividend yield of 4.7 percent, and we're seeing an improved operational performance from their uh, convenience stores. So for these reasons, we've seen all sorts of companies do well, uh, Adnoc being one of them. Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, what's happening on the sovereign bond side, uh, Eric, we had, of course, uh, news out uh, that Oman has been uh, more aggressively tapping into some of the markets. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just wondering now with the higher oil prices, uh, does that mean you start doubling down on Omani government paper? Well, uh, Oman government paper offers an attractive yield over um, other, let's say, more highly rated securities. With oil prices elevated, it's a, um, it's a uh, opportunity for the uh, government to improve the uh, fiscal position. They are quite levered into the price of oil. And as a result of with oil prices uh, at these levels, their financial position becomes just that more uh, strong, which also means the currency is under uh, less pressure. Uh, short term interest rates themselves uh, can decline, which provides further financial uh, stimulus or easement for the local economy itself to uh, perform better. So while we've seen a lot of outperformance from these securities, we still think there's good opportunities in terms of the incremental yield, which one is able to uh, earn by investing in companies like Oman or countries like Oman and companies which are levered into uh, the higher oil prices. 